So in this demonstration, we're going to show you how to build an application on top of OURDS, the Oracle REST data services. To do that, you're going to define, of course, service connection. But the best practice today when you're working with service connection is to start by defining a backend. This allows you to switch the backend between, for example, your dev, test, and production environment. So let's create a new backend right here. We're going to use a custom backend, and we're going to give it a name. So, for example, this can be our OURDS HR backend. You can give a description if you want to, and then you need to provide the URL to your instance. So our OURDS is published in this URL. This is, by the way, protected um, with OAuth. This is why when you just access it from a browser, you're not authorized. So we're going to copy this URL over here and paste it over here. And we're going to just remove the um, last part of the URL. So just keep the OURDS slash schema name over here. Next thing you need to provide is the authentication type. Again, um, you can use basic, but what is recommended usually is to use the client credentials approach, which is more secure. For client credentials, you would need to provide a client ID and a sick. They would look something like this. And you also need to provide the token ID. The, the token ID is basically the same URL as your service over here with OAuth slash token after the schema name. So that's what you provide over here. Once you get this in place, you can click create and you'll create a new backend. Now you can go over and create a new service connection. Now you can create a service using an endpoint. So just point to a specific endpoint and edit. But one of the advantages that ODS provide is the they have an open API spec for their services. So we can actually use that. So let's create our employees service okay we can copy the url to the open api for our endpoints okay this is basically after the schema slash open api and the name of the endpoint so we'll paste it over here this would recognize that is based on our backend so we can actually choose our backend this makes it a little bit more generic and then the other thing you want to do is you want to copy the full open api over to your application the authentication is already provided over here, and we can click Create. Now, Visual Builder identifies that there are some issues with the Open API spec. Specifically, we're missing some IDs, uh, but we can have Visual Builder compute this missing operation ID for us. Once we do that, we would have the list of our IDs in the endpoints. And um, one thing that is specifically problematic in the current version. If you go into the source code over here to the URL of your server, you would see that it dropped the um, specification of slash employees, which should be there. So let's just add this, and that's the endpoint over here. So once we add this and we uh, switch back to the endpoint, we can see all our endpoint over here. We can click on one of them, and we can even test them. So for example, send a request and get the information back. So this works. Now, one more thing you want to do with um, REST services that are based on ODS, and that's to provide a transform function. This would let Visual Builder know how to do sorting, um, querying, and pagination, for example. So to do that, you can click here to create a transform. Um, for example, you can give it a name called um, ODS transform .js. Okay. And you can choose which function you want to override. I'm going to override a lot of them, so I'm just going to pick one of them right now. This creates a file for us over here with sample code. There's specific um, syntax that you can give uh, for ODS. Right? Uh, we have samples of this in the cookbook and also in the blog. So let's copy that sample. And we're just going to replace the whole thing here. With a sample code. And again, what you would notice here is that we're doing things like defining how filter parameters are being passed, how sort parameters are being passed, and things like that. All right, so now that we have this in place, it's time to go and build our user interface. So we have a little page over here. Okay. And we're going to design, for example, a page with two panels. I'm going to have one panel on the left side and another panel on the right side. And then we can use, for example, a search component 
um, put it up here and assign it um, some variable. So we'll call this one our search variable. All right. Now we can get our data from our services. And under services, we have our employee service over here with the various endpoints for creating the operation. So for example, if we'll take the uh, get many and drag and drop it down here, we can drop it as a table. Okay, and pick up, for example, that we want to show the name of the employee, their salary, and maybe even their ID, like that. We need to provide the primary key. In our case, the primary key is the employee ID. We can also define a filter criterion if we want to. So let's define a criterion here that checks, for example, if the employee name contains whatever we have in our search variable. Can, of course, you can add additional conditions here. All right, so now um, we're going to go over and fetch the data from our REST service. We get the REST service here, and we can even do searches. So if we type SEA, we get shown. If we just type S, we get employees that have S in their name, like that. Um, of course, you're not just limited to fetching information. Our endpoints include, for example, the ability to update an employee. So what we want to do is be able to select an employee. So let's pick up our table over here, add an event here um, on selecting a row, and we're going to assign a variable, and we're going to create a page variable called selected ID, for example. And we're going to assign to it the value of the row key. Okay. So now when we select an employee, we populate that field. On the right side, we can take, for example, um, the update operation and drop it here as an edit form, like that. And maybe we want to update the name, maybe the email. Again, you can basically decide which fields you want to show, how you want to show them, and you need to provide the ID. The ID is the selected ID. So this is the ID of the employee, both for the get and for the put operation. All right, go back to our application in live mode. We can now click on Jane, for example. This would show us Jane's information over here on the right side, and we can update Jane, for example, to update how much she's earning, right? and click Save. Um, if we want this to also update the table, by the way, we need to modify the Save button to do an update for the table. So for example, we can take the table, give it an ID, And then the save button, we can say, after you do the update at the end, we want to do a component event. And in this component on our AMP table, we want to invoke the refresh event. Okay, so if we now go back here, and refresh our data. Okay, we can look up Jane, click on Jane, update Jane to have a different salary, click save, we save the data and updates our table. So this was a quick demonstration of creating an application on top of the ORDS REST services.